Well, misinformation on vaccines is dangerous, but unfortunately, it's very easy to find online. Our reporter, Jared Reed, is here. He's been scouring social media, looking to see uh, what the vaccination debate is there. Uh, so tell us, Jared, how is social media fueling uh, anti vaccine anti-vaccine messages? Well, the anti-vaccination movement has grown a lot over the last 20 years or so. And because of that, a lot of the information that people are being directed to when they search for it uh, is unscientific uh, information. And Facebook is one of the big problem areas here because it's where a lot of these groups known as anti-vaxxers have uh, their base. And I just want to show you what happened to me when I did some searches uh, on Facebook. So we opened Facebook here. I typed in the word vaccinations in the search bar. We can cle see clearly here one of the top results is vaccines cause autism. We know that this has been debunked, but it's something that just won't go away. This is what happens when I just type in the neutral word vaccine by itself. The very top result for me is something called the Vaccine Truth Movement. It's a group that's got 17,000 members in Phoenix, Arizona. I can't see what they're posting because it's what's called a closed group, but we can see pretty clearly it's anti-vaccine. And what we can see is the rules and the guidelines the group itself has drawn up for members. Let's look at two of those. Uh, the first one, no suggesting or promoting doctors, pharmaceuticals, over-the-counter drugs and other poisonous substances, you'll be removed. And any post that conveys the approval of vaccines will be deleted, removed and blocked. And this is pretty key here because by creating rules like this in a closed group situation where members have to be uh, approved, these groups can spread misinformation and not actually be challenged by it. And that group is just one of many that exist on Facebook. And like I said, they're very easy to find. This one took me about 40 seconds to get to. What are social media companies doing about this, Chair? Because it seems like if you've got patently false information that's being spread there, that uh, this really shouldn't be there. I think the big social media companies like Facebook and YouTube too uh, understand the problem, but I would probably argue they're not doing quite enough about it. And this goes beyond anti-vaccination, of course. These, these platforms have a problem with misinformation in general, political propaganda, extremism. All of these things have found a place on these platforms and so there have been calls for them to do something about it. Um, when it comes to YouTube, last month uh, YouTube said it was going to recommend fewer videos that could misinform viewers in harmful ways, so videos like promoting miracle cures. When it comes to Facebook, last year it said it would start deleting misinformation that contributed to violence and harm. But we have to keep in mind Facebook is still making money from ads placed by anti-vaccination groups. Uh, YouTube, though, for its part, has stopped doing that. Do we know if this misinformation on social media is actually influencing decisions that people make on whether to vaccinate or not? No, we don't know that. And that's because these big social media companies pretty jealously guard their user and engagement data. And without that, it's very difficult to do independent research on behavioural patterns. And, and one thing I do need to point out, no matter what the social media companies do, people can still find a lot of information uh, through websites and things like that. So it's one part of the puzzle. Jared, thank you so much for your insights. Uh, our reporter, Jared Reed.